नमस्ते व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू अवर टेक्निकल चैनल गणेश पाइपिंग दिस इज दर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड वी आर नाउ इंट्रोड्यूसिंग द प्रोग्राम रिलेटेड टू फायर फाइटिंग बिकॉज स्टिल नाउ वी हैव डन ऑफ शोर वी हैव डन लॉट ऑफ टेक्निकल टॉपिक्स बट वी हैव नेवर टचड दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट subject of uh, fire fighting because if you go to any industry uh, be it oil and gas chemicals or even manufacturing production we always have a system which is designed to protect it from hazards and fire so fire is one of the hazard of course uh, leakage of toxic gas Uh, chemicals that is also a one kind of hazard out of this fire is also one of the important hazard and there is always and should be always a system to protect the entire system plant from the fire so in this session we are going to discuss the different methods of fire fighting so let us start uh, today's session so this is fire fighting we can see here there are two ways of protecting from the fire they are the active protection versus the passive protection so now what is this active and passive protection like for example active protection is a device or a, a system Uh, which is incorporated into the plant and it protects the property from the fire directly like for example uh, we can see here there is a fire sprinkler so this is the fire sprinkler we can see here so this fire sprinkler when there is a flame and temperature rises so immediately this fire fire sprinkler will start spraying water on the flames so this is an example of active fire protection so now in this today's topic we have discussed the entire program into four four sessions and today is the first session so in this session we are going to touch a very very basic elements of the fire protection and first of that is the active fire protection so let us see that what is active fire protection like for example if there is a uh, instant fire in a plant so there are several conditions for this fire like for example when the plant is working in that case if there is a momentary fire then if someone notice someone has noticed the fire and they 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 will try to extinguish it or they will uh, they will run a siren and uh, which will give an alert uh, signal and then the fire team fire brigade will approach and then they will take the necessary action this is one of the condition another condition is that uh, when the plant is uh, uh, some section of the plant which is in a dormant uh, condition like for example a go down where generally a little man movement is involved especially in night shifts uh, in night or uh, second shifts like uh, after general shift uh, maybe 6 6 o'clock in the evening a uh, very little material movement or man movement is involved inside that areas so if there is any uh, fire which which is not which cannot be noticed uh, so in that case there has to be a system which will take care of this uh, fire which is not which is unnoticed due to less uh, due to absence of man movement in that area so for that uh, there is a system and we are going to see those systems there are several of the systems automated systems uh, one of that is the fire sprinkler system these are all the Uh, active fire protection systems and uh, secondly the passive fire protection system is the one which do not take 
direct involvement to extinguish the fire, but it rather compartmentalize the fire. Like for example, there are 10 different uh, areas in a plant. If there is a fire in one of the area, then that area is uh, designed using certain uh, material uh, walls. So that wall will compartmentize that entire area which is under fire and it will slow down the spread of fire to the another area. So it will not directly extinguish that fire but it will slow down the spread of fire, rate at which the fire will spread. So if it is slow down then there are of course certain alarms uh, which will sense the smoke, which will sense the rise in temperature and it will give uh, an intimation to the security, plant security and safety team. So they will come into action. So this way, the another type is called as the passive fire protection because it doesn't take direct, uh, it, it, is, it is not directly involved in extinguishing fire, rather it slows down the spread of fire. So that is the passive fire protection. So in this uh, active fire protection, we can see uh, active fire protection as a matter of clarification active fire protection is comprised of systems that require a trigger to work efficiently in the event of a fire okay so uh, active fire protection a fire extinguisher is also uh, which we can see here uh, it is also uh, active fire protection but it is not automatic like some person has to uh, break that cock this is the cock and then it will be functional and uh, there will be foam or uh, the chemical, dry chemical. It will be sp uh, sprayed on the flames and the flames will get ex extinguished. So uh, this is a, some, uh, it is all active but it requires a direct involvement of person. But there are certain active fire protections which uh, do not require a direct involvement of a personal. Uh, they are automatic. So how they operate, how they work, uh, that we are going to see in uh, coming sessions. So this for them, this uh, statement is uh, applicable that those triggers may be manually operated as in case of pull station or fire extinguisher, which uh, right now I have explained or automatic. Automatic means uh, there's no person is uh, physically needs to be physically present to operate that. It will be uh, event driven like rise in temperature, smoke, flame, uh, that way. So a smoke detector, heat detector or fire sprinkler head, but all require some action to be performed to engage the system. Engage the system means bring the system into action. Okay. So if it is manual, then someone has to uh, first uh, that fire should be noticed and then uh, he has to break the cock and uh, start the fire extin uh, extinguishing process by means of manual extinguisher and whereas in others it is automated. So now let us move to the next that is the passive fire protection. So passive fire protection as I have already uh, ex uh, explained that. Uh, so, uh, to avoid the, uh, to reduce the spread of uh, fire and to protect it, uh, both this type of protection uh, has to be devised uh, in a plant. So, uh, let us see that uh, passive fire protection, PFP, are made up of systems or components that are, that compartmentalize a building using a fire resistant rated walls. Floors and ceilings compartmentalize a building into smaller sections helps to slow or prevent the spread of fire or smoke from one room to the next. PFP helps to limit the amount of damage done to a building and provides its occupants more time for evacuation. This is very important uh, point. 
in addition it helps protect first in addition it helps protect first responders who have a better chance of put, putting out a fire that is compartmentalized versus added danger of trying to put out a fire that swells to encompass an entire building so the spread of fire the time is increased because of this passive fire protection so pfp components include fire smoke dampers fire doors and fire walls and floors so uh, this is all about uh, today's first session of fire protection we need your support to run this channel you can support us by subscribing to our channel if you have not subscribed it and share this information with your friends and colleagues this is your channel so it is your interest to promote this channel so that uh, we can it will help us to make more and more uh, technology videos and share this information with you and your friends so thank you once again for watching this video have a fantastic new year ahead thank you